Welcome to the second session of Online Academy for Social Impact, as part of the Erasmus Plus Project Environmental and Digital Citizenship, hosted by ITML. In this session, we will expand on the online presence and communication of the users and mainly on the app of TikTok. But first, let's present the trainer, Dr. Kranaki Despina. She holds a PhD in Media and Communication from Loughborough University and is now an adjunct lecturer in various universities. Since we are talking about the media, let's see some ideas, things and perspectives that we examine when looking at social media cultures. In the 90s and early zeros, going online meant that you are standing apart from humans. Now, it means staying connected with people from all over the world due to the tools we have available for chatting, sharing and connecting with others. This is how a web page looked like back in the days. Many people looking at this video might not be familiar with this. Truth is that a lot has changed since then, we were able to sign on a cyberspace, as we used to say, but it is not the same as today, that we are chatting, searching, studying, flirting and taking exams online. Every day, we think and we hear about the negative connotations that sharing online has. That thought is totally understandable. But, as a researcher I am here to encourage you to think outside of the box and think of all the positive connotations that sharing has. We have multiple words like TikToking, Instagrammable, Facebooking, reporting, tweeting, posting, sharing, which describe our experience with social media. For us, the word platform, which very effectively has been interwoven in the way that we talk about social media, has given a different sense of the architecture of the site, but also the politics. The platforms are considered cyberspaces in which people can speak out, no matter what their message is. The platforms promise an open space for the users to express themselves, but also for the advertisers to lead their products to the pop culture. Equal terms, cloud and smart. Words that, at the same time, mean for us a place where we can store without risking losing the information that we stored and smart, in the form of wise, let's say technologies that offer us a lot of affordances, that obscure that this cloud and smart technologies belong to someone who is actually not us. This means that someone has access to both our public and our private data. So there is a way in which we have these metaphors as the theorists say. We have these words which shape and create boxes in which we understand social media culture and our positions in it, but also in ways that help us ask questions about what it means to be online or offline, to be on social media or on a diet from social media. How do we stand politically, culturally and socially? I might ask you have you written anything online today? You will ask me, what do I mean online? It can be on Facebook, on Instagram or on TikTok. And by written I might mean a comment, a share or a post that you made. There are many more terms that show how significant it is to talk with these sorts of discourses and concepts about social media. In the 90s, our way of chatting was Hotmail's MSN. There were forums, chat groups, where you could find all sorts of discussions. The anonymity helped people do some serious conversations. Due to the anonymity, we also didn't have much of an idea of what a heavy user is. The heavy user used to be someone who was using the internet from 2 hours to 12 hours. This could mean a person who has to be online for their work or, after the pandemic, even the children who attend school classes might have to be online that much. Right now, that we live in an environment where we are networked most of the day, either to work or study, have fun or communicate. The term heavy user is quite blurry and that's a problem in policy discourse. The term Internet Addiction Disorder or Just Addiction was established in 1996. The thing is we have to learn how to properly use the social media. Because we are constantly watching, scrolling and swapping in our social media as a means to escape our boredom. The word metaverse was first heard from Neil Stevenson in 1992. It was about discovering ourselves in the cyberspace, which has been a discussion since the early 90s. In this condition, we belong to, what the researchers call, networked publics. This refers to the people who have access and use the social media technologies. These networked publics play an important role in shaping the political, social, economic, cultural, but also moral, ethical and value-laden landscapes of contemporary life. The online world does not belong to the unified public sphere, but we could see it as a patchwork of public spheres. Some pessimists consider the social media to be echo chambers, filter bubbles or places where people expose themselves selectively 9 This has to do with the algorithms which read or choose our taste and show us what we want to see or what we like. That might lead to further radicalization and creation of extremist groups online. 
The overall idea would be to understand that such publics, ideas and conditions basically coexist. It is helpful to see the social media condition and the networking technologies condition as a form of an abundance of symbolic material, interpretations, meanings, positions, and try to understand each time what different things these conditions mean. Instead of being constantly conscious of what technology does to us, try and read how different people interpret it. Another thing that defines our idea of being part of networked publics is actually having an audience. When we share something, we need people who will respond to that. We take into account that there are people who will read and listen. We have an idea of imagined audience, which is the very broad pool of people who can react to our post, and a target audience, which might come from our personal or professional network, it might be people we interact with or with whom we are connected via hashtags. Hashtags are discussed in research as very important annotations and categories. So, we also become hashtag publics and ad hoc publics, because we gather around common causes, issues, discussions. Global conditions gather people around hashtags. We create effective ties, not only with the hashtag, but also the publics talking about it or experiencing what it is about. So, theorists come to talk about effective or intimate publics. Hashtags become vehicles of active or activist participation. Just to sum up, indeed what social media and network technologies offer us is ways of publics to be formed, not just very fast and across the globe, but also in very effective and mobilized ways as well. No matter if that means having disputes, a lot of hate speech and polarization coming in, they definitely create conditions in which we engage publicly with things that matter in any way or another. So, this means that talking about social media in that way matters as well, instead of just expressing concerns regarding the overall social media condition. TikTok is a platform mainly used from young people, the Gen Z as we call it. It seems to be their way of expressing themselves socially, politically and culturally. It is though discussed through concerns about how young people become more politically apathetic, how the platform basically redefines norms, behaviors and so on, so how young people are either at risk of being affected by the algorithm and the norms appearing on TikTok or how young people are addicted to this sort of application. TikTok is a platform that is discontinuously discussed in political terms, in terms of racial politics, body politics, in terms of democratic participation. You can see Barack Obama with Brent Rivera, who is a very famous TikTok influencer. There has been a lot of discussion when TikTokers were thought to be responsible for one of Donald Trump's rallies failure. The platform is used for many celebrities, used for news by media, tutorials, to share art and so on, so it is a very diverse platform. The affordances of TikTok, the features that it offers are features that are much easier for younger people to adapt and use. This infuses concerns about how easily young people use and adapt to the features of this platform. Another concern is that these applications are intended mainly for fun, that they can host unstructured moments in young people's everyday lives, which though are thought to be related to structured, educational, creative ways and practices as defined by adults and not by the young people themselves. As a conclusion, older adults are afraid that young people are distracted from what they are supposed to be doing, which is educating themselves and participate politically. Discussing TikTok so much inevitably make us think what differences it has made, how it has created a different form of participation, how we moved from a persona-based era to a post-based era. It is a shift maker regarding storytelling, the stories that we share are similar to the ones on other social media, but the way we share them differs a lot. So all these affordances do make it to the academic discourse, they definitely do not make it to the policy discourse. So we will not see discussions about how people understand TikTok as a safe space to talk about their identity, their problems, create and join communities that have to do with everyday concerns. There is different hierarchy as it is not as easy for anyone to become a TikTok celebrity as it is for a public figure like Madonna, who already has the package to make it. Yet it is still doable for everyone. When we talk about TikTok celebrities we have to acknowledge how much these people invest in terms of time, work in order to become social media celebrities without having the prior package. This changes from platform to platform. In contrast to other social media platform, on TikTok it is the post that attracts and not the persona. As a result, TikTok is considered a lot more open because we can't predict the algorithm and what is going to be viral, 
so anybody can reach huge virality stats. All these can be understood in what theorists discuss as attention economy. So attention economy in a sense that attention online has a particular value, not just monetizing value, but also cultural, social, and political value. Of course we can accept that all these kind of values are commodified in social media. They are still a form of commercial economies, but at the same time we cannot devalue their inherently political, social, and cultural significance for all the users. Thank you very much for participating. For any questions or further discussion you can contact us anytime.